Ready? Yeah. Hi, I'm Chris. In year 2002, I had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening. It was uh, kind of like getting a drink of water with a fire hose. And at first, I didn't know what it was. So I went to doctors and they checked me out and they all said the same thing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Yet I felt like I was on fire because I was resisting this energy. I wasn't, my mind was, which, which I was identified with at the time. So my mind acted up and what I did was somehow somebody told me to go see a channeler, a spiritual channeler. And when I went to see him, they told me it was a Kundalini awakening. And that's how I knew what it was. So I went to see other channelers and they all said the exact same thing. This is a Kundalini awakening. I didn't know much about Kundalini. Um, so for the next two years, I went to absolute mental hell. 95% of the people who have Kundalini awakenings have very rough rides because their mind and their belief systems challenge this energy. And this energy is really who you are, you're just not aware of it. And for the first year, my mind said to me over and over and over, we're not letting go. I heard this statement 24 hours a day seven days a week for a whole year nothing else and it was not pleasant I didn't know how to stop it the more it talked the more it said it the more I fed into it the more I believed it I felt powerless and I was a pretty positive person when this started I did a lot of uh, reading and I listened to motivational audio tapes I took a course on NLP once with Derek Balmer in Toronto so I had a lot of tools behind me None of them was, none of them helped. Everything went out the window when these voices started to come up. So, my girlfriend at the time, her mother and her were into meditation, the Buddhist path. And they introduced me to mindfulness, which is be aware of what's happening in the moment. Put your attention on your feet touching the ground. So, I, this is what I started to do uh, throughout this awakening. I started to be more present. But it was hard because the energy took me away from it and the voices took me away from it. So, after the first year of hearing the words, we're not letting go, after that, another voice came up saying, stop. And I heard that for the next year. And throughout these two years, it was so, it was so hard on me that I many times ran to the river which was close to where I was living with a knife ready to end it all. I couldn't take it anymore. I said, how could something that's supposed to be good make you feel so bad? And there was many times where I had a knife on my wrist and I was ready to end all this and at the last second something within the heart would open up and it felt like the sun. I heard a voice, a powerful voice saying, no, this will not happen. And every time this happened, it shook me out of my complacency. And I stopped. I didn't do it. I said, all right, maybe there's somebody within me that can help me with all this. And I've tried many times to, to end my life because of this awakening. Two years after these voices, I, somebody told me to go see a psychiatrist, get some medication. And so I did this. And as I took the medication, the voices died down and went away. So I was more able to concentrate my energy in the present moment and for the next many years, I became present. I focused in the now. I was aware of my feet touching the ground. I was aware of my surroundings, the sounds. And as I did this, one day I heard a voice say, this too shall pass. And I would say, where's that voice coming from? And I would hear, all is well from time to time because I was in the moment. And this voice gradually built up and it was always positive. And this voice was a voice of my higher self, which introduced me to my angels which, and my guides. So I got, I started to communicate with angels throughout my 
the next many years. And as I became more present and mindful, I was guided to taper off the medication, come off it. So I lowered the medication. And what happened was my concentration skills became so powerful. I felt the power of the now. And I meditated almost every day on my rise and fall of my breathing. And then, just when I thought it was over, they say that once you get to almost to the top of the summit of enlightenment, anything that's in your mind will come up and challenge you because you're flooding it with light. It has no choice but to reveal itself. So just because the waters are calm doesn't mean there's no crocodiles in there. So many years later, as I started to get glimpses of bliss and ecstasy and peace and joy and profound information, the voices came back. But I was not going back on medication. I said, no, I'm concentrated. So I focused in the now. And the voices came up and they said some of the worst things you could possibly imagine. But you know what? The over 90% of my energies were in the moment, so the voices didn't affect me emotionally. And then what happened was, for many months, uh, every fear I've ever had in my mind that I've heard somebody experience or saw came up. If it was in there and I was afraid of it, it came up and it challenged me. So luckily I was able to receive information from my higher self. And he would speak to me and tell me what to do. And then he finally said, it's time to start releasing these parts that are creating these voices. And I never knew you could do that. No one's ever told me you could release a part from your mind. So you are your spirit, and you have many parts around you that you've created throughout your life. And these parts uh, do most of your thinking, unless you're in charge. Unless you realize that you're not these thoughts. An unhappy thought is not who you are. It's your ego. It's your programming. It's your lies, your false belief. So, I released a total of 15 parts. Some took hours, some took days, some took weeks. And some of them were absolute hell. The things they said to me, I don't want to, I won't say them to you because I don't want to put fear in your mind. But, you know what? God is a mountain. And you can't climb up a smooth mountain. It has to be rough for you to grab hold of something and get you to the top. The good news is, hell took me to heaven. Now, a lot of people pay big money to awaken their kundalini. And the experiences I get now are, I feel bliss for hours. And I feel joy. I feel like lightning is passing through me. Yeah, it's out of this world. So. This is my experience, and if you're having an awakening, or if you're feeling a powerful surge of energy through your body, you're not aware of it, it's good to seek out a spiritual channeler and see if they can pick up whether it's a Kundalini awakening. I can do it for you too. My guides and my angels can tell you if you're having an awakening. So that's part of my journey, and that is it.